Hi, this is Ischel Perez, and I'm here to talk about more chemistry. Today I'm going to be talking about molecular orbital diagrams. I'm going to be using N21 minus and N21 plus for these examples, and I'm going to be going over a couple terms before I get started with the MO diagram itself. So let's go over a sigma bond, which I'm is the Latin symbol. This is going to be our single bonds between two atoms making that molecule. There are also pi bonds, which uses the Latin symbol. This is also going to signify our double or triple bonds, which will be explained later. Now we're going to use these symbols to describe our bonding pairs and our antibonding pairs. So for example, if I say sigma 1s, if it looks like that, it's going to be a bonding pair. Now if it looks like a sigma 1s and there's a star, that's going to signify our antibonding pair. These two pairs, the bonding and antibonding pair, are going to work in conjunction to make the molecule bond with the atoms within. The other thing I want to talk about is the bond order. Now say I have a the bonding pairs that will have an S2 or a antibonding pair with an S2. Those we're going to add up. So it's going to be one half times the bonding electrons, which we will count up, minus the antibonding electrons. And that will give us a number like say 1 or 1 1.5. Now what if we have a bonding order of 0? Then that is very important because that means the molecule does not exist. So we're going to keep our eye out for a bonding order of 0. Now the bond order is going to signify which of our molecules, when we compare them, is going to have a stronger bond. So if it's we have one molecule that's 1 and another one that's 2, the 2 is going to be greater, and therefore that will be the stronger bonds. And subsequently, that will mean shorter bonds. Now what if we have the same, where it's a molecule with a bond order of 1 and another one of 1? Well, then we get to look at the antibonding electrons. So say we have two antibonding electrons versus one. The two is going to be greater, and therefore that will be our stronger and shorter bonds. So we're going to go ahead and put that all together like so. So I went ahead and got started on some of these for us, but let's go over the molecule and why we call it the molecular orbital. So our nitrogens on the left and the right are our atomic orbitals, or AO for short. Now, if we have an atomic orbital on the left and an atomic orbital on the right, that means our center one will be a molecular orbital, which is our big ticket item, what we're looking for. So right away we have N2 minus. Now let's go ahead and signify which one is going to get our extra electron. Since I already started the one on the left, we're going to make the one on the right the atom with the extra electron. I went ahead and filled out our nitrogen on the left. Now we fill out from the bottom to the top. With seven electrons, two, four, and seven. So now let's move on to the nitrogen on the right, which has one extra electron. So filling in, we're going to have 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So let's go ahead and fill in the molecular orbital itself. We're going to combine the two to make our molecular orbital. Now as you can see, this is where the sigma and the sigma star come into play, because as you can see, we can now define which orbital has each electron. 
So same principle, we're going to fill in bottom to top. So two and four. And then we're going to do the same thing with our 2s. So our sigma gets two and our sigma star gets the other two. Now for the final piece, the two p's, we have to do something extra. So we have to do pi 2px, pi 2py, and sigma 2pz. Now if you're wondering why it looks like so, that is because we have a large sigma pi bond. What that means is our sigma is going to be stronger and therefore higher than our two pi bonds. Note that this only applies to the lower half, not the upper half. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and fill out our P. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that is how we fill out this N2 minus. Now let's move forward to N2 plus using the same principles that we learned before. Now I've already filled out the N on the left and our N2 over here is going to get our electron removed. So let's fill out this section on the left. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So using the same principles that we learned before, let's go ahead and fill out the center molecular orbital. So we have one, two for sigma 1s, three, four for sigma star 1s. Filling out the same section for 2s, we have sigma star with two and sigma with two. Now using the same principles as before, let's fill out the bottom to the top. So one, two, three, four, five. And that is it for the molecular orbital for N2+. Now if you look at both of them, you can see that each one has a single electron that is unpaired. On the left, it is in our pi star 2px, and in our N2+, plus, it is in our sigma 2pz. What this means is that both are paramagnetic. Now, how do we compare the two molecules? We have N2- minus and N2+. Plus. For here, that's where the bond order comes into play. Now, I've gone ahead and spelled out the electron configuration for both N2- minus here and N2+, plus here. Now, we're going to use that to come up with the bond order. So, let's show our work by coming up here and compare the two. So, we have our bonding molecule or our bonding electrons are here, 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 and here. So two, four, six, eight, ten. So we're going to annotate that here for the left. Same thing on the right. We have two, four, six, eight, nine. So then for our antibonding electrons, we have two, four. Five. And on the right, we have two, four. So if we do our math, on the left, we get 10 minus five is five over two, which is 2.5. And on the right, we have nine minus four, which is five over two, which is also 2.5. Now the important thing is that neither are zero. So therefore, they exist and they're stable.
Yay. Now here's where things get a little tricky. Both bond orders are the same, 2.5, but we do have our backup, which is the anti-bonding electrons. In this case, our N21 minus has five, and our N21 plus has four. So because our N21 minus has the five, that means that has the stronger and therefore shorter bonds. So shorter and stronger. Which also means therefore that the N21 plus has longer bonds and weaker bonds. This is because we have a triple bond in the N21 minus and a double bond in the N2 plus. So that should cover everything. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. Thank you very much.